And wrapping up the session is Gerardo Dominguez, who will be speaking about the cavity ring down spectroscopy for the complete isotopic characterization of, of lunar surface volatiles. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity to share uh, what is, I, I, I would say, a, an instrument concept that is, is very much at, in its infancy. And this uh, concept grew out of a collaboration that was uh, 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 catalyzed by the uh, NASA uh, uh, survey uh, program uh, between myself, uh, Jeff uh, Gillis Davis, and uh, Ryan Ogolore at uh, WashU. Uh, next slide. So obviously we're all here because we're excited about water and volatiles being uh, present on the moon. Uh, and so the science goal that I think, you know, um, a lot of us, you know, would like to know is uh, where did these come from? Uh, next slide, please. So one potential end member uh, or potential end members of this water uh, consists of meteorites or comets. And as you can see that, you know, in this chart, uh, plotting the D to H ratio, um, you know, the sun uh, has a very distinct D to H ratio compared to these groups of comets. But there's also a lot of degeneracy between the DDH ratio of, of comets and other potential sources. And uh, for reference, there's the DDH ratio of Earth. Uh, next slide, please. So another parameter that could perhaps help in disentangling the potential sources of water on the moon is uh, oxygen isotopes. And, when, and so when I say complete isotopic characterization, I really want to emphasize that it's important from uh, this perspective to not only know the oxygen 18 to 16 ratio, but also know the oxygen 17 to 16 ratio. And uh, this plot here is a delta delta plot showing essentially the um, major reservoirs uh, of the solar system on a delta 17 versus delta 18 plot. And clearly the sun, um, there's now very strong evidence that the sun is very distinct from the terrestrial planet in its oxygen isotopic composition. Um, the other thing to notice about this, this uh, slide here is that terrestrial rainwater, um, you know, plots on it on a slope uh, that's known, well known to isotope geochemists as being the terrestrial fractionation line. And that slope of one half on this kind of plot is essentially the result of uh, the evaporation and condensation of water in the hydrological cycle being dominated by mass dependent processes. And so deviations from this uh, slope uh, signal novel non-equilibrium quantum symmetry based uh, chemical effects that are not completely understood, but uh, can be used um, or, this, or the ev evidence of deviations from the terrestrial fractionation line can be used as uh, tracers uh, for sources from in this context. Or processes. Thank you. Next slide. Um, so coming two minutes. Two minutes. The, thank you. Coming back to the composition of the moon. Uh, ultimately, the composition of 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 water, uh, but other volatiles, I would argue, is going to come down to the source of the, the the composition of the sources and the relative abundances of these sources, plus the convolution of surface chemistry, uh, transport and retention, and the uh, in the moon's uh, uh, atmosphere. Next slide, please. So traditionally, isotope ratio mass spectrometry has been used in the laboratory to give us uh, very tight constraints on the sources uh, of uh, volatiles, uh, and traditionally to measure the D to H ratio and also the complete oxygen isotopic composition of water samples. You need to under basically do um, chemical separation of of, uh, of the hydrogen and oxygen in a laboratory type scale. And this is, you know, of course, very uh, uh, expensive, but also very massive uh, uh, and too massive for, for space uh, applications. Next slide, please. Um, in the last decade or so, um, cavity ring down spectroscopy of water vapor and other volatiles has uh, become a uh, instrument that uh, in many ways uh, either matches or surpasses the resolution of traditional isotope ratio mass spectrometry. And that's, sort of, that's the focus of our um, development work that we have uh, started to pursue. Uh, but essentially, uh, cavity ring down. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so cavity ring down spectroscopy by resolving the row vibrational lines associated with different isotopically substituted molecules uh, allows you to get 
uh, high precision uh, measurements of the relative abundances of these uh, isotopes. Next slide, please. And in our previous work, we've shown that we can actually resolve mass-dependent fractionation, such as evaporation, using a uh, Picaro L2120. It's an off-the-shelf uh, commercial instrument. Uh, and we've also shown that we can uh, integrate this type of instrument with a ultra-high vacuum line. Next slide, please. Uh, and in our recent work, we've actually uh, shown that we can extract small amounts of water from uh, meteorite uh, in a vacuum system and then do essentially pulse analysis uh, to determine both the amount of water, but also the complete isotopic uh, composition of uh, water samples. Next slide, please. 30 seconds over. Okay. Oh, all right, then I will uh, just leave it there. Thank you so much. Okay.